Hey, you know there's a shortage of them weasel hair paintbrushes you like so much? Yeah. Enter my grand business plan. May I present to you the Daryl Hair Brush, made from the finest of Daryl hairs for the most dignified of painters that only demand the highest quality that my natural oils and musk can provide. Sure, but how are you going to keep making brushes when you run out of hair on your head? Oh, the hair on my head is only the beginning. Every now and then I get a bug up my butt to try out some weird new product, tool, or hack I learned about on Reddit. And while I'm the sucker that's got to find out for myself whether or not these wise tales are fact or crap, I figured I might as well bring you along for the ride. And like many of the strange hacks or techniques that find their way into our hobby, this one today came from scale modeling. And that's of course using colored pencils. But these pencils aren't going to be used to paint our model start to finish, so before we begin that testing, we need to quickly get our Salamander Space Marine ready. The main goal here, whether it's using an airbrush or a big fat dry brush, is to really boost the vibrancy with the armor as much as I can, as quickly as I can. I find that using pure white, followed by a coat of vibrant ink or contrast paint, really does the trick to push the model over the top in very little time. And to give the model some more volume, I'm actually going to spray it from below with a dark purple. And you can completely skip this step if you're painting a whole bunch of your own marines, but I find it gives us a nice depth of shadow that simple black or dark green could never give. I did a bit of research on different kinds of colored pencils to be used on miniatures and landed on testing out AK Interactive's weathering pencils for modeling. And this technique seems to have originated from using watercolor pencils, so we can use water to kind of activate them and create some different interesting techniques in things like scale model tanks and trains. These pencils are water soluble while being grease based, and I'm not sure exactly how that works. I always assumed that oil and water didn't mix. And one of the main reasons I decided to test these over other options was because of this picture right here on the back of the box that shows the pencils being used to edge highlight. As we all know, edge highlighting is a tedious task, and while I've actually learned to enjoy it through a lot of practice, if there's a product that can make it easier for painters of all skill levels, I think it's worth investigating. Unfortunately, it was almost immediately apparent that this edge highlighting with these pencils was not going to work. The pencils don't leave a clean line behind at all. It's almost like they're a hard wax that really struggles to leave the pencils. And when you do get it to come off, they leave behind a level of dust. And if you blow that dust off, well, most of the highlight you attempted to apply leaves as well. They also struggle to fit into smaller areas I'm trying to edge highlight, which isn't really a big deal because I could always shave down the pencils to a smaller area. But the fact that they don't cover well means that even on a large vehicle, I just don't see myself using these for edge highlighting. So I guess that's the video for today. Make sure you like and subscribe. Just kidding, we're not gonna give up that easily today, but seriously, please subscribe. I did a bit more digging on different options and techniques to use for these pencils, and I found some really interesting and promising uses, so let's keep going. But to get to that point, first we've gotta get our model to a level of completion, starting with that edge highlighting. And this is actually not that difficult at all if you follow a few simple rules. First, make sure the color of your edge highlight is a sizable step up in brightness and vibrancy compared to the base color. Second, thin the paint with only a little bit of water just so it leaves your brush easily. And third, and most importantly, wick the brush off on a paper towel prior to touching the model so you get that nice clean line instead of flooding that edge with water and paint. My research confirmed that what these pencils can do really well is weathering, so we're going to set up this model to give us a bunch of different options for types of weathering and test them all out. I'm going to paint a variety of different metallics and other colored hard surfaces because just experimenting over the green armor of our Space Marine isn't enough. And you don't need to hear my dumb voice while I'm painting these metallics, so let's montage this SOB. I'm 
gonna end up painting some of the Melta gun black and I'm throwing down some quick highlights now so that a single coat of black wash later will have some built-in highlights from this gray showing underneath. After throwing that wash on the gun, I'm gonna use the same pre-highlighting method on all the leather. This works much in the same way a white dry brush does under your coat of contrast paint, but I can be a little bit more exact and not worrying about accidentally slapping that dry brush over areas I've already finished painting. And as I finish the last couple of details here, you've probably noticed that I'm not base coating entirely over that green primer for each of these different materials. The main reason why I do this is that it's way faster and we end up with much more interesting shadow colors this way. As long as we paint the majority of the surface in the color we want the object to be, the shadows can have that hint of whatever color the primer was and not read to our eye as it actually being a green object. This saves you a ton of time base coating and you can use that time instead Instead, pumping up the highlights one or two steps on each of these smaller details. Because after all, these details are not what people really spend their time looking at on your models. We want them painted just well enough to look good and clean, but not spend any extra time on them. I'm gonna slap down my basing paste now, and you may be wondering why I've chosen this exact moment to put it on. This crap takes a while to dry, and I'm gonna go eat lunch, so. All right time to bust out the pencils. And in the research I did, there were some interesting things I found as best practices that other people do when using these things. First off, I'm gonna matte varnish the whole model. This gives us a bit more of a surface with a grip to it that the pencils can cling to. Next, it was a big eye opener to learn that you can actually dampen the lead on these pencils and then apply them to the model. And this really excites me because it gives us a lot more options and how thin or thick we apply them on the model. And here we have made an immediate impact. I suddenly have way more vibrancy or punch that these pencils can apply, albeit at the expense of control. And because this gives us a liquid to work with on the model, I can come back with a clean, damp brush to form streaks, remove excess, and shape this verdigree exactly how I like it. Next, I'm gonna try out some armor chipping on our salamander here. And one thing I like about this set is that it has a bunch of named pencils that are for specific uses for us to use on our models. This one particularly is called Chipping Color. I guess even Daryl could figure out what this one's used for. Today's video is sponsored by Titans Terrain and their Kickstarter that's live right now. This stuff, quite frankly, is friggin' brilliant and I'm kinda pissed I didn't think of it myself. If you've been in the hobby for a while, you understand how expensive plastic terrain kits are and how long they take to paint up. And then you've gotta find a place to store them all. But that's what I love about these Titans Terrain kits. They don't just address one or two of those issues with terrain, they squash all three. They are 10 times cheaper than buying a full table of plastic terrain. They're beautiful and detailed right out of the box, and they fold away neatly back into their box for easy storage and transport. And their new Kickstarter features six epic sets from three unique worlds. The core sets have everything you need for a complete 44 by 60 table of terrain, and the expansions give you epic centerpieces and even more options. So make sure you check out the link on the live Kickstarter for Terrain's Titan right now, and you can pick up some awesome looking, affordable, and easy to store terrain. I dampen the pencil with just a little bit of water, which makes the lead a thicker, almost like a hard paste consistency. And I don't have control over creating smaller random chips like I would with a sponge, but this was incredibly fast to pull off. Plus, I have the option to come back in with my damp brush and create some nice hazy sections or even some streaking coming off of these chips. This flexibility made these pencils a lot of fun to just mess around with, and I started to feel comfortable with them. And because these things are water soluble, I'm not at the mercy of only being able to work with them for a few seconds before they dry like you do with acrylic paint. I can really easily reactivate them with a damp brush and kind of scrub around areas even if they've been drying for a few minutes. I tried to weather the black gun with a dark color called smoke and this really didn't leave much of an impact so I came back in with a lighter dusty sand color. And this contrasted so much better with the black and it really shows the potential for larger models and vehicles to get that faded dust effect that isn't easy to pull off with any level of control using other effects and products on the market. 
Now in the box, there's three different colors that are labeled light, medium, and dark rust. And there's two other ochres in vivid orange colors that I think would also be really good. And this was one area I really wanted to spend some time to figure out how much control and variety I can create with rust effects. And yes, of course, we can emulate rust with standard acrylic paint, as well as with enamels, oils, pigment powders, etc. But one of the things that I'm really starting to realize, especially when I was working on Rust, is that these products do something that I really enjoy in combination. Their ease of use, their speed to get an effect done, and most importantly for me, the control I have when using them. I can dampen a few different colored rust pencils at the same time, draw on some lines and dots, and then use a damp brush to come back in and define and refine the effects to the way I like them. It's so incredibly fast and I can do multiple colors at once. And I don't have to worry about slopping on too much because I can just use a damp brush like an eraser to remove any excess. And this may seem like a little thing, but when I do weathering, I oftentimes am kind of tentative and not trying to overdo the weathering effects, fearing that I'll cover up some of the good parts of the model I've painted or I'll overdo it and ruin the model entirely. But I just don't have that fear with these. If I overdo anything, I can just erase it with a damp brush at the edges or I can reform it and get it just the way I like it. I use a pure black on the spicy end of the Melta to give us that nice sooty charred effect. And I've gotta say this is the easiest way I've ever gotten an effect like this. It was even easy to fade that harsh black into a smooth transition to the copper on the rest of the gun. And this set does come with four different metallic pencils. And I thought, well, I'll give the old edge highlighting another try and bust out these metallics and try to get the edge highlighting back up on the metals that I painted on the armor. But once again, it looked like shit. The pencil lead just seems way too hard when they don't dampen them with water first. And almost none of the color came off on the model. And I didn't want to push too hard for fear that I'd tear up some of the layers of underneath paint. Sure, I could have dampened the tips of the silver and gold and make them usable, but then I wouldn't be able to have any control and there's no way I would have ended up with a crisp, clean edge. So I ended up just using standard silver and gold paint to create some scratchy edge highlights and glints of shiny metal peeking through all of our weathering. And at this point, I'm starting to realize that once dried, these pencils leave a beautifully strong matte finish, which really contrasts our satin acrylic paint, even after our earlier matte varnish step. And honestly, moving forward, I'm not even gonna matte varnish the models before I start using pencils on them. It just seems to really stick well and I have a lot of control as long as I dampen the leads first. And as we finish up our salamanderine with some pigment powders on the base, I want to kind of reflect on my final thoughts on this product after I've had a couple of days to think about it since finishing the model. These pencils really can give you a wide variety of different weathering effects. And there's not really a one-to-one -one comparison in what they achieve to other products on the market. They're kind of like uh, pigment powders in the really matte finish they have, but they're also kind of like enamel paints that can really give you some nice streaking and interesting effects. But there's one big thing that these pencils don't need that you do need for enamel paints. And that thing, is mineral spirits. When you're working with oils and enamels, you've got to clean your brush, you've got to clean the model, you've got to deal with mineral spirits and not water in order to use those products. With these pencils, it's just water, meaning I don't need any other chemicals in my house. I don't need to worry about how I clean my brushes. I don't need to worry about accidentally putting my brush in my mouth once I've dipped it in mineral spirits. Because of that, these things are so much easily usable. Right off the shelf with any painter, whether you're brand new or you've been at it for years, these things are pretty slick. Whenever I'm testing out a new miniature painting product and I come to the point where I need to decide whether or not I'm gonna fold it into my regular miniature painting routine, there's two big questions I ask myself. One, does this do something unique or better than the other products that try to achieve a similar result? And two, is it time efficient in my mini painting workflow to actually use this product? 
because if I can just grab the product off of my desk and use it with no extra hoops to jump through and it gives me a cool effect, then I'm much more likely to integrate it into all my miniature painting. Well, I do wanna make clear that this video is not sponsored by AK Interactive and I'm sure there's other brands on the market that sell a similar product. But I am glad that I picked these up I'm just not gonna be using them for edge highlighting. A big thanks for hanging out with me today and a special thank you to all my patrons. It's because of your support I can buy and try weird products like these. Your support really does mean a lot to me. I'm gonna be back before you know it with another new video. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray. Always the fear that I forgot to turn the camera on and this whole time I've just been talking to myself.